Welcome biologists. In this session we're going to take a look at the bits underlying there, so the structural and functional differences between skeletal, involuntary and cardiac muscle. So here are the three different types of muscle. You need to know similarities and differences between all three, but also how to identify them from a microscope image. So there's some terminology involved here that we need to know first of all. Multinucleate means I've got several nuclei within the cell. New unit nucleate means I've got one cell. Striated means that I've got like a stripy appearance, like in this image here. And non-striated means that it's got, it doesn't have that stripy appearance. We have three different types of cells here. So we've got a branch cell, which as it implies, the cell branches off. We've got cylindrical in shape, and we've also got spindle in shape, which you'll see in the images in a minute. We also need to know their function and the contraction length. So is it going to be slow, is it intermediate, or is it a fast contraction? So first of all, let's look at voluntary or skeletal muscles. So this is um, responsible for movement of, of conscious control. So for example, the movement of your arm or whatever. And what it has here is, as you can see in this particular image, this one is striated, all right? It's multinucleate, so it has several nuclei within a cell. And it's striated because of the bands of actin and myosin. The cells are cylindrical, so they're kind of like a cylindrical shape. And as I mentioned before, it's involved with moving the skeleton or the bones or joints or limbs. And this one has a very short contraction length. It's very rapid. A cardiac muscle. Um, so this is, makes up the cardiac muscle that um, causes the heart to contract. It is myogenic, which means it contracts on its own without the nervous stimulation of the nervous system. It's found only in the heart. Uh, this is striated, but it's not as strong a stripy appearance as we just saw there within the skeletal muscle. This one contains branch cells. So as you can see here, here in this image, the cells kind of like link up if you like. They are separate, but they are classed as branched cells. And they have interlocking junctions, which is what you can see here on this image. Now they are unit nucleate. So although they kind of have, if you like, these bridges, these interlocking junctions between them, they are separate cells, all right? So each cell has one nuclei, which is why it's called a unit nucleate. This one has an intermediate contraction length and speed. And the last one we need to be aware of is smooth muscle. Now this is involuntary control, um, so, for example, the smooth muscle that lines the trachea in your airways, you don't need to think about how this is contracting or why it might contract. Smooth muscle, this is involuntary. Now, this is non striated As you can see here in this image, it doesn't appear as much of a stripy appearance as the other two. It is uninucleate, uh, so it has one nuclei within each cell. And as you can see here, they have a more of a spindle-shaped cell for this one. Now, these ones are involved, for example, with peristalsis, controlling the diameter of the bronchi and the trachea, and also the pupil size, arteries and arterioles. And there is no regular arrangement for these ones. So what I advise that you do is pause the video, try and draw out this uh, Venn diagram and fill in the blanks. So this will help you to determine the similarities and differences between all three of these, which you do really need to be aware of. So pause it, have a go, and then the answers are coming up now. So I'm not going to read through it all because you, you, you can see that in front of you, uh, but that is what we should be getting um, to know the differences and the similarities between all three of those types of muscle cells. Now, the one thing that we haven't done is look at the images taken from a microscope image. Okay, so here are three images of the different types of muscle under a microscope and you do need to be able to identify these in an exam. Um, it hasn't been on for a while so it may come up soon um, but these are the different types. So if you want to pause it and have a go try and identify in each one that might be a good idea. So the first one is cardiac muscle. You can kind of see the interlocking junctions on those. Voluntary or skeletal muscle there for number two which you can see a really obvious stripy pattern in that striation uh, of the muscle fibres and then the last one there is a the smooth muscle. Um, which you can kind of see those spindle shaped cells within it. So there are clues within those images to give away which one is which muscle. So there we have it. That's the bit in red that we've looked at. And we'll cover the rest of Spec Point L in another couple of videos because there's a lot of content here. Guys, good luck, good luck with your exams. Don't, don't forget, don't use the word it, the amount and size. Use good scientific terminology to make sure you get all of the marking points and good luck with your studies.